What's up, y'all? Thanks so much for clicking on the video. My name is Leah, and let's talk about Growing Up Hip Hop, Season 7, Episode 6. So this review is going to be different in the sense of the format because I don't have the screenshots. I'm sorry in advance. A lot's been going on, <laughs> so I didn't really have time. But honestly, not much happened in this um, episode to me and when I say not much happened I mean like as explosive worthy that I feel like this is going to be a pretty short review that screenshots probably might not even be needed but let's get into it all right y'all so the first thing we're going to talk about is Aaliyah and Eric honestly y'all this is giving a fake storyline it's giving fake because we have this scene where <clears throat> Aaliyah is still upset uh, with Eric in the whole gambling situation. He's at the table while she's at home with the kids. It's nighttime, and she keeps calling him, but he's not picking up. He finally picks up, and she's like, when I call you, you need to pick up. And he's like, okay, you know, he's being very nonchalant about it. But when he gets home, she locked all the doors, and he can't get in. And I'm like, you don't got a key. Like you don't have, you don't, y'all don't have like a spare key or anything. And she locks everything and then forces him to sleep out on the patio. And it just feels fake. Cause one thing, there's always spare keys, whether you're living in an apartment, a townhouse or a home or a trailer, you always got a spare key. Number two, it's giving fake because I feel like had this been real, the way Aaliyah and Eric would be yelling at one another because they give like they get loud when they argue. They gave very like this argument gave very subdued him just banging on the window. And my thing is, is like Eric gives me if he really wanted to get in that house, he would have gotten that house. And he has enough money where if he he didn't get into the house, all he had to do was get in the car and drive to the nearest um, hotel, like the nearest Holiday Inn or like Best Western or something like that, you know. So I was just kind of like, it feels fake. It feels fake. Now, could I see this being a real storyline in their household? Yeah, I could. But this act, this seems like a reenactment. Like they've probably gotten past this and now they're reenacting this situation of them, like him not coming home, her having issues with him. And they're giving us this for this season because the energy don't feel real. It doesn't feel real from them. So then we get this heart wrenching scene with Lazy and, um, and twist so twist is like doing like a rehearsal with his band and you know they're singing a song the song actually sounded pretty good and lazy shows up to the rehearsal you know just to be there and like vibe off the energy and all that stuff and next thing you know he gets a phone call and it's his brother and you hear his brother saying mom's not mommy's not gonna make it and like he is screaming he is sobbing like and I felt bad for Lazy because I was like, I could only think of how that would make me feel, like how anxious and like I would be so jittery and like like my heart would be racing and overwhelmed. And the screen fades to black and we find out that the mom um, unexpectedly had to go to the hospital and then unfortunately later on like passed away. And I just felt so bad for him because that's a horrible way to get a phone call that your parent one it's horrible to even think that your parents will pass away especially if you have a good relationship with them and it's not like and it's unexpected like normally you can like it's still unexpected if you if your parent passes away from like an ailment because you're like okay it's a disease we know the end is eventually coming near but it's still like oh my gosh my parent is gone but I feel like you kind of start the grieving process a little bit sooner versus you not even knowing what's going on and next thing you know you get a phone Phone call from your sibling and it's them breaking down because they're freaking out that their mom is in the house. It was just, I felt so bad. I And it was like the way that man was screaming and crying on the phone, I it was such a like visceral reaction. Like I had to pause the video for a minute because I was just like, oh my goodness. Like, oh my goodness. Like it, he just, ugh. you could tell he was broken up. And like I... I hope Lazy and his family is okay. Like, you know, prayers and positive vibes to them because, wow. And, you know, Tiny was, like, trying to figure out what was going on. And it's just like, girl, just ride with your man. <laughs> just ride with your man. Because right now, it's a lot. It's a lot going on for him. It's a lot going on for him. 
So we have this scene with Sequoia and Devin, and pretty much they're just walking around, and it seems like um, Lazy and Tiny have kind of made Devin like the the man to like hold down the fort while they're going or whatever. And Devin is telling Sequoia while they're walking that you know <clears throat> they want Sequoia to be a part of the showcase for the 50th anniversary of hip hop. And she's like, I don't know. Like, it's still kind of weird. It's still kind of funny. And then Devin lets it be known that they want Cree to, like, um, host the event. And she was like, what? Girl, nah. And my thing is, like, you can tell that's totally production because Cree don't fool with nobody on this cast other than Vanessa, JoJo, like the Simmons. Like, she does not go out her way to engage with anybody else other than them. So it's like... This is production. This is so production. And my thing is, I get it. I get it because it causes drama. But I'm also interested to see what Creed can do because all we've gotten to see is Creed do a parking lot party. And for her to be so big about how she's an event planner and all that stuff, she ain't really giving us nothing to be like, ooh, and ah, and about, you know? So I'm wondering how good she can do with this. Um, I don't know. I think at this point, Sequoia need to get over it. Like, I get her being upset with her mom. Like, I totally get it. Like, I would feel some type of way. Like, why weren't you open and honest with me? And then the energy Tiny had at their sit down was like, you want to treat her like an adult, but then you also want to son her like a kid. So it's like, pick a lane, Tiny. Same with Sequoia. Sequoia wants to have this adult conversation with her mom or this relationship, but then she kind of like sometimes reduces herself to a child with the way she acts. And it's kind of like both of y'all need to pick a lane and stick with it. We then see a scene of her pulling up to like meet with Twist. And my thing about Sequoia is it's giving thirsty and you're too pretty to be sitting out here thirsting over some dude. And then it's also hypocritical. And I'm glad she said she was being a hypocrite for you to be trying to mess with Twist when Twist is a rapper and you upset with your mama for messing with Lazy and he's a rapper. It's giving hypocrite vibes, girl, because you're doing the same thing. And for her to be like, well, I think he's changing. It, you got more proof that Lazy has changed versus Twist. Twist just now is on this walk of like healing and reconnecting with his fave. Girl, the boy just cheated on his girlfriend. And the girl said it wasn't even the fact that it, he cheated. It's the fact that he cheated, who he cheated with. Which lets me know it was either a friend or a foe. And either way, that's disrespectful and op behavior of Twist. So Sequoia looked thirsty and she need to stop. Stop it, stop it, stop it. So the last twist scene we have is of Twist actually going to talk to a pastor. And y'all, something really must have happened between him and Maya for him to be acting this way. Like, he must, like, sh either she must have said something that really struck a chord with him, or she really must be changing her actions like she really must be holding to her guns about like not getting back with him unless he changed or if she really just like I don't want no parts of you I think something really must have happened because in the beginning like the first episode when Twist was talking about he's working on his spirituality or getting back to the Lord I really thought he was just talking but in the sit down with the pastor it really made me feel like something must have happened to where something in him like awaken or he must have had an epiphany where he realized that like he really gonna be alone or he's really not in a place where he's happy and I really think when he sat down with the pastor it pretty much solidified to me that Twist is trying to find something to ground him and he was talking about how he was just been living really fast a little too fast and normally when that happens with people it's something in their life must have really like sh something happened in their life or some or, or an event happened where it pretty much reflected to them like where they were going to end up or how badly they are living that they want to now find something to like hold them steadfast and I think it's good for him that he's trying to find his grounding because it seems to me that twist is the type of guy that will be like oh a woman is supposed to ground you type of mentality and I feel like Maya told him that's not me that will never be me and was like I'm out 
But it just seems like something really must have happened because in this conversation, you know, he's just talking about how he lost his way. At 14, he moved out of uh, his mom's house because he became famous. You know, he prayed to God about being com- becoming famous and moving out of his mom's house. But he said he didn't see, you know, a life of like addiction and, you know, not being what he thought he was going to be when he was praying to the Lord. And oftentimes that's, that's normally what happens. <laughs> But basically the pastor that he was speaking to pretty much told him that, you know, you have to forgive yourself. And I, and that's true. And it's really hard for a lot of us to forgive ourselves for the expectations that we set for ourselves. But if you want healing, the first person to forgive is yourself, not the person who did anything to you. It's you for being so hard on yourself at the age of 14 of course you're gonna make stupid decisions you got access to money alcohol and drugs you're gonna make stupid decisions and stupid decisions he made but hopefully he has continued with his journey and he is successful in it and it's six and is successful in finding what he feels will ground him I do think I hope he's going to therapy and church because my uh, my mindset has always been like therapy is supposed to make you mentally well um spirituality or religion or that that community of that sort is supposed to feed you spiritually or like feed your soul and it all together it makes a well-rounded person so I hope it works out for him all right, y'all. So on the TT in Egypt. So we see TT is in Las Vegas with Pep, and they're sitting down at uh, at Pep's home. We find out that Pep might have to get neck surgery, but she's like hesitant to do it because it might change the sound of her voice. I wonder if she got it done because at the Grammy she performed Salt and Pepper performing Spinderella, and she sounded the same to me. She looked good too. So um, they're having this conversation, and pretty much Pep is trying to push. TT to make the first move as to like reaching out to Egypt now that she's pregnant as well as you know wanting to know if she's gonna come to Egypt's wedding so I guess they're gonna have a second wedding like it's weird because I was like y'all had the wedding at the chapel like what's the point but I guess they want to have a second wedding like an actual wedding kind of like with a reception and um and the whole ceremony in the church and everything like that which is you know I don't think it's smart Cause he about to get locked up supposedly, but I also feel like what's the need, but you know what? It's your life, your money. So TT's whole thing is like, why do I have to reach out as well as why would I go to their wedding? Like I ain't go to the first one and I don't really believe in this union. What's the point of going? And She's just like, Titi's like, I don't know. I She tried to blame everything on Sean, but truthfully, she if she don't go, Sean ain't going. And if Sean don't want to go, she not going. Pretty much, they a package deal, and they just not, they both ain't here for it. Even And Titi said, even though me and you are cool, when she was referring to Pep and Sean are cool, it's just like, us right now, it ain't it, girl. It ain't it. It's just, we ain't it. But she actually goes out to um to where Egypt is because like they were like you know you should go see her and TT goes she sits down and she is just like you can see her eyes are just like judging everything in the house and my thing is like I know a lot of people are like TT was just being negative and harsh but it's like good good like honestly y'all Egypt would not be in this situation had Tretch or Pep like stepped up as actual parents and like put their foot down and really got like really spoke to Egypt about the decisions and the choices that she was making or really like vetted who Sam was. Someone finally told me Sam was 28 and I was like, this makes sense why Egypt is dumb in the head because when they got together, cause Egypt is like four, like 24. That means that like when they got together, she was probably either 20 or 19. And then Sam was either 24 or 25 when they got together. So I was like, it makes sense now. Like she's young and dumb and then you meet somebody that's also young and dumb but a little bit older than you and you start to think you doing something. It makes sense. 
And it's just kind of like, that's why people look at Sam like he ain't nothing but a bum because you're 28 and you don't really have that much to show for it. Like you don't have any degrees. You got two kids. You're trying to have this music career, but it's like, it's not working. And, and, and instead of actually getting a career or an actual, like, yeah, actual career or a job that is profitable for you. All we seen you do is pretty much try to ride the coattails of Egypt in this wave of being a part of this show. And it does make people look at you funny and side eye you and, and look at you like, yo, you are a bum. Because it's like, what like what was you gonna do without her? And my thing is like, I don't mind TT telling Egypt, like, you have to do this, y'all gotta do this, like, what's going on with your case? Like, I know, like Sean's not in jail but like sometimes he'd be away for three weeks and I'm by myself and that's a lot of itself and it's like motherhood is hard everyone be trying to sugarcoat motherhood or like even parenthood because there are some you know single fathers out there but like parenthood is hard especially when you're by yourself and you don't have a village around you and Egypt is in the middle of bum freaking nowhere by herself her mom is an hour and 30 minutes away and her dad is a couple hundred dollars in a plane flight away and it don't seem like Egypt has any like friend friends that are like really riding with her that she could lean upon that aren't uh, aren't a part of her family so it does seem like it's I like they like her and Sam isolated themselves out there or she was isolated by him I just feel like I'm okay with TT judging her. I'm okay with TT being harsh. I'm okay with TT being negative. Because at this point, Egypt needs to have like a hard slap in the face of realization that you might be doing this by yourself for a hot minute, bruh. So let somebody be real with her for once. But yeah, y'all, that is it. That is all. Remember to be bravely authentic and hop down in them comments below. Deuces. <laughs>